whether or not you can trust somebody. Um, I am now, it's interesting because I know people, some people in the public eye and I know about them and I know how they um, view their viewers and their viewers almost are in a situation, uh, in a position where they would, <coughs> I don't know what they would do if they knew. You know, what, <coughs> let's say you think about somebody who's, I guess your hero, uh, somebody that you really look up to. And I want to say that in terms of people who <coughs> didn't have a father figure, a strong father figure. Let's say you didn't have a strong father figure. Um, if you didn't have a strong father figure, you may live your early childhood looking for that. You will be likely, uh, you can be defiant, you know what, you will likely be very, very happy when a male authority figure or a teacher or somebody takes interest in you, in your learning. So I think that a lot of people, of course, are looking at celebrities, <coughs> people in the public eye, as a mentor. You know, they feel there's, of course, something lacking from their own lives and they try to fill that in. And so basically they're looking for something in somebody that may not be there, you know. And people who are good at that, especially if they have uh, an agenda like a religious and, and I mean, oh my gosh, the stories I could tell you, but I'm not doing that anymore. stories I could tell you. First of all, people wouldn't believe it. The followers, the ones that uh, really like, uh, you know, these people, they wouldn't want to believe that because they want, to, at least not about themselves. And they feel like this is somebody missing from my life. When people are seeing in somebody what isn't there, <coughs> they also fail to reach out to the people that are there in their lives who may have something to offer. And what kills me <coughs> is basically when you, I try to keep it general, but when you know somebody who's falling for it and you don't really know what approach to take. You see, there are those who provide... <coughs> um, gosh, I took a long time ago this so-called class on it, you know, providing there has to be... And the guy said there has to be a need that you meet as a provider of a service. And I said, but you can also create a need. You know what I mean? Cigarettes are not a need, but you create it. Somebody creates it. Drugs or whatever. You know what I mean? You can create a need. You can make somebody think that this is the solution to a need that you have. And the need being whatever is missing inside of you. That's really the problem. That's really the... And again, intuition activated is really the right approach to all of that. It is so right and so simple because what you need, what we need in each other, we miss 
it is so common to miss the people that um, you may need. And I said it before that who you dream about can be so revealing. I had these situations where um, you can be surprised by who you don't dream about <coughs> and who you dream about. Because there are people that are around you that maybe over the years you will get closer to it, realize, oh my gosh, me and this person are so much, you know, we connect. But <coughs> for many, many reasons you don't connect right now. And that is a big problem. That's really where the middleman comes in. You know, society is so disconnected, divided, and the middleman is the media. And the media tells people what to think about those in other boxes because you cannot really steal the other boxes because you're in yours. And when you realize what's in the other box, <coughs> you can easily be surprised in a good way or in a negative manner. Because you know, it's never good to let anybody tell you what to think, who to love or who to hate. And that's what a lot of religious organizations are doing. <coughs> They're telling you who to love and who to hate. Who's your enemy and who's your friend. I really am still waiting for young Irish and people to give some feedback and let me know what their experience is like because you know I didn't grow up in a society where you where you have social media um, I when I grew up I couldn't have even imagined what uh, bullying is not writing you know if somebody says this person's bullying me then I'm thinking, okay, maybe um, we can um, stick together and not just maybe, we'll take care of it one way or the other. Because then it means you have to fight or you have to push or you have to do something, you know. But bullying, meaning that 200 people send you nasty, not even 200, 20 people send you nasty, Twitter comments, um, that's absolutely insane. All of these South Korean K-pop sensations killing themselves because they are being bullied online. I don't know what, you know, I think that for me it would have been great had I had Twitter as a child or Facebook. But I'm also wondering how distorted the mindset maybe. I think actually that it is very very good to, you know, when you can overcome a lot when you communicate through social media, you can reveal what's inside of you, you can connect very well if you use it as intended, you know, it can be a great extension of you, your social media account can be absolutely wonderful in terms of letting people get to know you and getting to know people and sort of not being fixated on just the people around you but uh, finding people to connect with not trying to make the connection <coughs> actually connecting with people and seeing and regardless of where they are but it also seems to be that words are now stronger than ever amplified you know I <coughs> listened to this Joe, Joe Rogan Bill Meyer discussion and I agree with so much of it but I also have to do it in a different way and say what would my life have been like what would my life be if I was 14 now living in this world I think it would be much better and I think that you know when we say 
uh, people are too sensitive. I don't know about that. I don't. I don't really. I don't really think that is it. A lot of people fake off sensitivity. A lot of uh, people want to <coughs> appeal to people by playing sensitive. Um, I think that's the biggest danger. People who are not sensitive, but they use it angry because they think that, or they realize that there seems to be something that people are actually drawn to when somebody gets your signals. Um, it's a lot easier to fake off being dumb offline. It's it's very easy. You see, when <coughs> what what surprised me when I when I you know first got on Twitter was just how how little how uninteresting some people are and how interesting some others are. And it is not about them not saying anything. It's actually about <coughs> When people only post banalities, things that have been said a million times, then I know there isn't anything new inside of this, there, there isn't anything happening inside of this person. And it helps, it helps to, you know, you, I immediately lose interest. And that's a natural way. But in the offline world, you may first get fooled or clouded and you know I love it how in the old days when somebody was quiet you know a lot of people would say oh he's just a deep he's just a thinker nonsense nonsense in most cases nonsense because it just means they're too dumb to come up with something quickly <coughs> and anyways these are just my midnight thoughts as I'm sorting them, as I'm seeing things clearer. And not just in terms of um, seeing and knowing. It's always easy for me to know the answers, but actually implementing it, walking the walk myself. I think it's wonderful. I think it's great how life uh, gives you chances again. And I say it again and again, life is a circle. It all comes back around. And sometimes you're horrified by, by realizing how great opportunities were for you before, already. How much could have been avoided <coughs> by you recognizing it. But I think that um, really the world is what you make it. And I think right now there is more option than Ever. And I think that probably arch negatives, children, teenagers, people under 25, they just know how to keep their mouth shut. They just feel that this is not worth it. That's just my thought. They probably think, none of this is worth my battle. This too shall pass. And I will just, you know, I'm, I'm sure if you had a group of arch negatives under the age of 25, they all would talk about things that are... <coughs> more significant and it wouldn't even be necessary to point out some of the things that they have a problem with in uh, everyday life so yes I'm still looking forward to you guys replies and answers clarifications let me know what you think I thank you very much for watching and I see you guys tomorrow